Hello everyone, this is Madhusudan Raj and this is 18th August, Tuesday, 2015. And I'm again here with my economic analysis uh, of one important event that happened last week. So I'm going to talk about today about the uh, devaluation the of the Yuan, the Chinese currency by the Chinese Central Bank and its owner, the Chinese government, the Chinese Central Bank, People's Bank of China, PBOC. So last week, suddenly out of nowhere, means out of nowhere for those people who are not keeping an eye on the international, you know, monetary system, uh, the Chinese Central Bank announced that they are going to devalue their currency by 1.9% initially and in the ensuing couple of days, they again devalued it by a couple of more percent. It's a total 4% devaluation and then they started kind of supporting it. So it's strengthened a little bit also in the international market. But with that, what is going on in China is the Chinese stock market is uh, also collapsing heavily. You know, in last month somewhere, uh, it collapsed by something like 8% in one day. So basically what I was saying, you know, since long that the so-called, you know, Chinese state capitalism is nothing, was nothing but a typical Keynesian, you know, business and economic bubble being blown by the central banks, money pumping, easy money policies. So now that artificial boom which was started by the central bank is now, un is now unraveling and the bust has arrived so Chinese economy is going to face you know a lot of headwind it's going to face trouble but we have to understand that why the central bank of China people's you know bank of China uh, suddenly had to devalue the currency now devaluation uh, means against the dollar which is and also against the other currencies but mainly against the dollar because dollar is the international currency right now it's the international mode of payment international medium of exchange so for example if you want to like for example if the Indian companies want to buy petrol from Iraq or Iran they will have to make payments in dollars they cannot make payments in Indian rupee because Indian rupee is not an international currency so similarly for China now this is this competitive devaluation is in, in technical term is known as currency war but I think um, more importantly it is nothing but the old boogeyman of old economic policy of mercantilism. Now mercantilism against which Adam Smith fought very hard and actually defeated it for at least one century. Uh, in the 19th century mercantilism was no more being followed by the European governments but before that when Adam Smith was writing his Wealth of Nations he was attacking this this so-called bigger thy neighbor policy of mercantilism so mercantilist policies today's all governments are mercantilist I have said that in past also so in mercantilism what happens is that people believe means government bureaucrats politicians and and the government economies they believe that for a country export is good and import is bad so they, they think that if you export items outside you can earn foreign currency and they think that that is good for the economy and they think that when you import go means import goods into you know your country you you know you buy things from outside you have to pay actually your 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 gold holding suppose you're in a gold stamp but you have it is the drain on foreign exchange reserves actually so they think that ex export is good for the economy and import is bad and that's why all the governments today are trying to you know push exports it is what is export laden so-called growth that is going on right now so so they don't like import, they try to restrict import like what the Indian government is doing. Indian government is, you know, they have waged a war against gold because gold is the second highest, you know, number of import in India and that, you know, the bill is pretty big in India is what they call trade deficit, balance of payment. And they're trying to boost export. I think Narendra Modi government recently announced that they're going to, you know, give a lot of boost to export. But even after that, export is not 
rising because the international economies, you know, European countries, the Western, you know, countries are, you know, facing recession right now. So there is not a lot of demand for the imported items, you know, from India and China and other countries. So that is what the governments are doing right now. That is what is currency war. That is what is mercantilism. That is what is uh, bigger, to die, bigger, you know, uh, thy neighbor policy. Governments are trying to, you know, boost export and try to restrict import. Obviously, that is a fallacy. You know, as Henry has would say that a good economic analysis and a good economist is that economist who not only look at the, you know, immediate impact of some policy and the short run effect of some policy, but also the long run effect and not only the impact of the policy on one group of people, but on everybody, on the whole economy. So right now what this people with the government policy makers and government economics, they're only focusing on the exporters. They are ignoring the unseen effect, as Bastia had said, that you, you don't have only have to look at the seen effect of the policy, but you also have to look at the unseen effect. And the unseen effect is the people who are relying on imports, they are suffering because the government is solely focusing on boosting export. And remember, for a country like China and for a country like India, so-called emerging economies, imports are more important because we don't have everything over here. The industrial base, agriculture, service, everything depends on imported items. For example, in India, industries are using oil and the oil, most of the oil comes from outside. So if you're going to make import you know, costlier and you're going to put a lot of protectionist measures, import restrictions and everything, then obviously the whole economy is going to suffer. Maybe some exporters are going to benefit because the government is boosting export. But the importers are going to you know, lose, the consumers ultimately are going to lose. And, and remember that in a market, you know, all sellers are not consumers, right? But you know, basically uh, all, all buyers are, all consumers are not sellers, but all sellers are consumers also. So everybody is a consumer in the market. We all are not sellers, you know, but we all are buyers, including the sellers. So when the consumers are going to, you know, uh, uh, get harmed, obviously everybody is going to get harmed. So the policy of mercantilism is stupid. You know, what we should have, in fact, is that the government should get out completely of the market and let the foreign, you know, free trade flourish. Free trade, free foreign trade is what is the answer. Instead of government and the central banks manipulating this, you know, market exchange rates of their currencies vis a vis other currencies, they should just, you know, we should have gold standard and we should have just no exchange rates basically. Gold will be and was, you know, international money. So you don't have to actually have any kind of exchange rates. The whole idea of uh, floating exchange rate is absolutely ludicrous. Anyway, but what I'm saying is why Chinese government and why Chinese central bank decided to do that because recently uh, there is a talk in America that the American central bank Federal Reserve is going to increase their interest rate. They have capped it low almost zero for very long almost in the since 2007's beginning of financial crisis the rates are rock bottom low around you know 0.25 percent real will be zero and many western you know banks are having negative negative interest rate now. So basically now they are thinking of increasing it. So that's what is strengthening the dollar and a strong dollar basically and actually, you know, they, they force the, the American government force the Chinese government to kind of, you know, uh, allow their yuan to strengthen because the Chinese government was, you know, keeping it a little bit lower so far, you know, uh, and, and then the American government pressurized them. That you allow your yuan to adjust, so they allowed that, and then the you know yuan you know become a little bit stronger, and that's what was hurting their export, right? So Chinese government was you know you know you know getting edgy because the stock market was collapsing and export was collapsing, and the whole economy is dependent on those exported items, the export earnings and everything because it's export led in growth, so that's why they were panicking and they ultimately decided to you know, counter the American pressure and they jumped into the currency war. So they have, they have just, you know, given an answer to the American central bank that we are no longer going to be dictated by what you are saying. We are also going to start devaluing our currency. But as I said, in all this competitive devaluation, ultimately the consumers are going to get harmed. People are going to get harmed. Because now in China, what will happen is that inflation rate will be like straight away 4% higher. Because how the devaluation will take place is this Chinese central bank will print yuan 
and buy dollars. So the moment they print you one, the supply of yuan has gone up, and that is inflation. So now what will happen is that the higher prices will also follow this inflationary policy. And uh, so the currency war has started, and this is competitive devaluation. So all central banks are right now devaluing the currency against the, you know, other currencies, mainly the dollar. So immediately what happened, and in that, as I said, we all are, you know, getting harmed, consumers, we all are consumers, and we are all getting harmed, basically. And uh, this competitive devaluation is also going to create bubbles, further bubbles, it's going to weaken the economy further. Uh, and, and because the whole world is globalized right now, anything that the China, and China is such a big player in the market, anything the Chinese central bank is going to do will have impact on it, you know, everybody. Immediately after that, the Indian rupee also, you know, weakened. And uh, right now it is, it is, you know, trading at something like 65 plus handle, which means that prices in India will also go up because as I said, on one side, the exports are not going up, even after so much of government's effort. But on the other side, because the Indian currency rupee is going to devalue against the dollar, so what will happen? Imports will become costly, and main item of our import is obviously oil. So oil market, though, is right now very low. The international price of oil is very low, but we are not getting any benefit. Government is taking away that benefit from us, so the prices are not really collapsing. Now what is going to happen if the Indian currency is going to weaken further? And many people say that it's overvalued. Many economists say that overvalued. I don't understand from whose perspective it is overvalued. But anyway, that's another you know issue of discussion later on. So if it is going to weaken further, if the Indian currency is going to weaken further, then the oil prices will go up. And obviously petrol, diesel, gas, kerosene, everything will go up again. And we know that the Indian economy is already struggling just today. The you know uh, credit rating agency Moody's announced after Fitch that you know they have lowered the Indian growth rate forecast and everything. So and prices of onion is again going up in Delhi. I heard that it is trading at something like 80, 85 rupees per kilogram. In Surat itself, since last you know month or so, it is trading at 50 rupees per kilogram. Tomato 50 rupees per kilogram. So the government statistics are showing the inflation is not there, but they are manipulating it, obviously. On ground, if you see, the prices are very high. They've hardly come down. So if the rupee is going to continue to weaken because of the Chinese central bank's actions, then we are going to see higher prices, and that means more trouble for us in future. Because uh, if oil gets costly, the transport will get costly, and everything, if transport gets costly, industry they use in oil is a main fuel energy source so everything will become costly with that costly you know oil and we never know when the oil you know prices will start to go up in the international market they're already very low around 43 dollars per barrel if they start to go again with this devaluing you know indian rupee weakening indian rupee then we are going to see real bout of you know price inflation in future so overall, you know, what is happening, as I said, the currency war is intensifying now. And what is, you know, nobody knows the future, obviously, but what is likely end scenario is this is, as I said, this is a race to the bottom. So every government is trying to make their currency weaker and weaker and weaker. And ultimately, these are all paper currencies. These are, these are not money. So what will happen is they will ultimately achieve their real value, and that is zero. That is what is likely to happen in future if if the governments and the central bankers they don't change their current Keynesian policies of you know easing and printing you know currency notes endlessly. So they will reach you know basically their you know you know paper value that is absolutely zero. And that means we are all in the trouble, especially those people who are holding all these paper promises. Okay, people who are holding gold and silver and other no hard assets, you know, they are going to basically benefit. The wealth transfer is already taking place. But as I said, what is the way out of this? What is the way out of this problem? As I said, the only only way out of this, you know, competitive currency devaluation right now is, you know, just removing all the government intervention and central bank interventions from the money market and let the market take it over and let the market provide the money and and i'm sure that money is going to be gold and silver which is the case since last 6000 years so what we need is the gold standard 
And in the gold standard, there will be no devaluation because it is you know, very difficult, almost impossible to print gold, isn't it? You have to dig gold out of ground, which is very, very costly, which is very, very difficult. So the governments will not be able to do that you know, uh, easily. And obviously then you are going to have stable money supply. And because the production is going to rise because of the use of technology, the prices will you know, fall you know, secularly. There will be a secular fall in the prices. But that's real growth and that's real progress. Falling prices is the sign of progressing economy, growing economy, not rising prices. Anyway, so some kind of gold back currency, you know, is you know necessary in future if we have to survive from this competitive currency devaluation. You know, beggaring thy neighbor policy is going to ruin us all you know, in the end. Uh, I don't know who's going to do that, maybe China, because China, Chinese government is buying lots of gold surreptitiously in the market very secretly. So maybe possible suddenly someday, you know, they will come out and announce that they have enough gold reserves now. They're going to back their currency. They want to make you want an international currency. Remember, the days of dollar are, you know, numbers now because dollar is no longer going to be the international currency. And not for very long in future because no currency has remained international you know currency for a very long period of time and the dollar sign looks like is up so maybe the next future currency will be yuan and maybe hopefully backed by gold i don't know fully gold convertible or maybe 20 percent i don't know what percentage but gold anchoring some kind of gold anchoring is going to require if we have to get out of this currency war because uh, if you will not get out of this currency war, then what will happen is, uh, as we have seen in history, currency war is followed by trade wars, and ultimately trade wars will be followed by actual wars, which will which will be a disaster for all of us, right? So, currency war has already started. It's intensifying. Uh, what will follow are protectionist phases by all the governments that has also started. So the trade war will begin. And as Bastiat said, if goods will not cross the border, then armies will. So after trade wars, what is likely to follow is the real war. And real war is going to be very, very dangerous for all of us. It, it will destroy the economics. It will destroy the war. So I hope, you know, I'm not holding my breath for this. Remember, I know governments are not going to do the right thing voluntarily. They will have to be forced by the, by the people. And the market forces are going to ultimately overwhelm them. Uh, and ultimately, this is going to kind of result into some kind of hyperinflationary, depressionary situation. We're going to see some kind of huge inflation, and then the economy will blow up. What um, you know, the great Austrian economist Ludwig van Mises said the crack up boom, the crack up boom, you know, stage is what we are approaching right now. Anyway, so. Uh, this is what I wanted to tell you that the Chinese government has jumped into the currency war and the competitive devaluation is going on, race to the bottom. Paper currencies are going to their you know, real value, which is zero. And in that, we are going to get hurt because rupee is you know, right now devaluing, it's weakening. Imports will become costly. And ultimately, if imports are going to become costly, everything is going to become costly. We are going to see, you know, economic, you know, structure distortions. Also, income inequality will rise. People will become poor. So these are some of the major effects that that we are going to see. They're going to intensify. They're already happening, actually. Anyway, so you know, these are all the reasons why the yuan was devalued. And as I said, what we have to do right now is to continue to buy, you know, hard assets like. Right? Gold and silver, they will hold their purchasing power. Ultimately, it is likely and it is moving in, into the monetary system again. The future international monetary system uh, can be one that is gold back, maybe anchored to gold. So, gold is moving inside the monetary system. It is uh, again asserting its monetary value. So, it is better to keep that in your hand and avoid any kind of paper promises. All right, so thank you very much for watching me tonight. And I'll be back again soon if something important will happen in Indian economy or in the world economy. Right now we are going through very dire times. It is very important for us to stay informed. And that is what is my job. 
you know, as a teacher and as someone who knows, understands what is going on to inform others. So keep an eye on my future video economic analysis and I'll see you later on. Thank you very much for watching me. Goodbye.